whatever. So uh, the idea of this uh, final panel discussion is, you know, um, today uh, we have discussed uh, different theories about uh, venture capitalists, uh, about uh, how, you know, startups uh, can uh, raise money and how can they uh, create some value uh, to multinational companies. So uh, now we would like to actually uh, put all these theories uh, on the question and to see from the true actors uh, of the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, what is needed to create value. Uh, so uh, Kunal, uh, you will be representing the startup, uh, you know, the, 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 the actors who are actually yes, <laughs> trying uh, to find the solution, technological solutions. Uh, for the consumers. Uh, Celine, uh, we are very grateful to have you here as a representative of uh, an investment community with the Luxury Tech Fund. And Peter Lamens, the director of Lafayette Plug and Play Accelerator. Uh, also, it's great to have your actually uh, insights on uh, the accelerator um, impact in this ecosystem. So uh, possibly we'll start with a, a, a small introduction. Uh, what you, you have heard, uh, you know, uh, the presentations of previous speakers. So if you have any feedback and uh, maybe something that you can highlight, uh, that would be very valuable. Should I start? A lady first. I think what I will uh, take away definitely is uh, what Jean-Claude Bieber told. So no conviction, but only doubts. So. I think um, definitely I come back with that. Great, Kunal. Um, it's really late. Uh, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for staying. Uh, you know, it's like at the end of the party, and then you know there's like the really brave people left behind, and what happens at the end of the party I is the is the people. real party. So my mind is like my eyes are like my mind is like kind of shrinking. And uh, so I'm going to try to make this en entertaining yet useful. So I'm going to use anecdotal, uh, uh, you know, uh, examples uh, which uh, are only partly useful, but more entertaining. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the question was, uh, what, what, what do you think? So you, uh, to, uh, to, to make it clear for those uh, who uh, don't know Kunal, uh, Kunal is the CEO of the Luxury Closet. Is, uh, the Luxury Closet is the second-hand um, luxury goods platform, online platform in the Middle East. And Kunal uh, is uh, uh, a um, growing startup. And a joker. And a joker, yes. And uh, we are actually doing a case study uh, with Kunal on how to, for the startups, how to attract investors, the VC investors, on different stages. And uh, your uh, venture is on the Series C, so it means that it's international expansion. So, what do you think about, you know, uh, the value of uh, uh, accelerators, the value of uh, VC firms in your international expansion? So, this is the question. Um, so I firmly believe that uh, the team makes the progress, so, and the team figures out the problems. Um, and you should do like a laissez-faire attitude towards them. So you should just leave them uh, to be, and uh, you know let them do their jobs. Um, I think that of course accelerators are useful. I once went to the 500 startups campus. Uh, and I thought that it was brilliant because they taught startups how to growth hack themselves, right? So they said, listen, you as a startup are going to grow from, you know, one person to, you know, you, and from there you're going to have to figure out how to learn how to get customers, how to build technology, how to hire. So we're going to try to hack your process and teach you how to do it faster, which I thought was brilliant. So I really made a mistake. Maybe I should have gone to, uh, gone to one, of these, uh, one of these accelerators. So I think that, yes, depending upon where you are, uh, useful. Uh, but ideally, if you can get this talent within your own company uh, or advisors uh, you know, that constantly teach you how to do this, then that's, that's great. Uh, I think uh, other than that, uh, uh, investors, I think their main job is to, 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 uh, to constantly challenge you. I think that's the best thing that they, that they do. 
and to not be happy and say, no, what, you doubled over last year, you have, what, you're only 200% growth, no, it's 500, you know, that company is doing 500% growth, and you're just like, man, okay, let's do 500% growth, so I think that's, that's, that's what we get from our VCs, and it's good as well. Celine, do you have anything to, to comment on? <laughs> Not sure. As an investor, I mean, when you are investing in the ventures, are you awaiting a 200% growth or what are your kind of like investment criteria? No, I don't think that we are the one to set objectives. So the startups, the founders, the management team, have, they have to define them. Of course, we discuss them. Uh, we try to make sure it's going to be realistic. Uh, because in reality, um, from our experience, it's very rare to have startups that will realize their BP. Uh, most of the time, it's not. Uh, but we have some cases. They manage to. Uh, so it, it, it's possible. Uh, but uh, no, we are not the one that would pick the figures and say, yeah, you have to double, triple. Doesn't make sense. Especially if they say they won't be able to do it. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> so possibly there is some investment opportunity here. Uh, so Peter, um, before previously uh, we were discussing the uh, client venture model, yep. uh, the model that says that actually every actor in the startup or entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, has uh, every actor has to uh, concentrate on what they are best at. And I remember that we have previously discussed with you, uh, you know, the role of a La a Lafayette Plug and Play as a matchmaker yep. between corporates and the startups. Could you please uh, maybe explain what exactly you're doing and how you are helping to startups uh, to find uh, the clients rather than equity uh, sure. stakeholders? Um, first, uh, there are a lot of different models. Uh, under this uh, accelerator uh, word. And you have to be really kind of careful. Uh, it's like when you choose your MBA, uh, choose, the, choose the right ones. Don't go to the, to the accelerators that take some equity upfront of this kind of stuff. I would also, this is my, um, don't go to single corporate accelerators, especially if you're a young uh, company. Uh, to me, there are more startup killers than anything else, if you're young, okay? Because if, you, if, the, if the startup doesn't end up working with the, with the, with the, with the corporate, it will give, you, give a very bad signal uh, to the market. And th that's the first uh, pitfall. Second pitfall is that usually if you're too young, the company, the, the corporate, the single corporate uh, accelerator will, um, make you tailor your, your product to their own needs, okay? And then we'll close a lot of doors uh, for, your, uh, for your future growth. Um, so what we're doing to, to answer, your, to answer your, your question, we have quite a different uh, model. We are a startup accelerator that is co-financed by multiple corporates in the same vertical, retail, and e-commerce. I think it's a quite a healthy model. So all these corporates are co-financing the acceleration program, okay? And how we help startups, we are completely business oriented, okay? We're not here to help them find their product market fit. We are uh, sourcing them by first gathering all our corporate partner business needs, okay? Then we launch call for applications, but, uh, and, but we really um, source for the specific uh, startups that will answer these needs. Uh, and then we have a selection process and all the corporate partners are all involved in all the different steps of the selection. And at the end of the day, you end up, we end up with 15 to 20 startups that will stay with us during three months, okay? And we will present them potential customers. That's our role. We are sourcing super qualified startups for our corporate partners. Okay, and for the, on the startup side, we are bringing them their new big customers. Okay, that's uh, 
a very uh, interesting model indeed. Uh, let's speak about international expansion of startups. Uh, so, uh, speaking about your accelerator, I know that you have some startups that are not based in Paris and that they, they come especially for your acceleration for three months. So, how do you work with them and how do you help them to actually develop their business abroad? Do you have a network or well, you're called Lafayette Plug and Play, so how does it work? Yeah, there are, there are two cases. Uh, the first one is all the non-French startups that are applying to LFI plug and play. As we don't take any equity up front or, or uh, we don't, I mean, cost nothing for the startups, it means also that we have really mature startups that are applying to our program to test proof the French market. Mm. It makes sense, okay? You want to expand uh, outside of the US, for example, or outside of Asia, you can just apply and if you are selected, you will meet with, in just three months, potential, all your potential customers and really face your, the French market. So this is how we, we can help international companies to, uh, to uh, grow uh, in France. And for the French companies, we, have, uh, we are part of a big network of accelerators, uh, of 28 accelerators all around the world. Uh, most of them are verticalized. We have four retail accelerators all around uh, in the world. We have and, uh, the main headquarters in Silicon Valley because Lafayette Plug and Play, by the way, was built between initially the Gallery Lafayette Group and Plug and Play Tech Center, which is one of the biggest startup accelerator uh, in the Silicon Valley and the most active investor also uh, in the Silicon Valley. So we have, of course, strong uh, links with all these uh, these accelerators, and we can send mature enough French companies also to the US, to the Silicon Valley, to New York, or to China, okay? But the, the, what is important to say is that you, you, you need first to reach a critical size before going abroad. It doesn't make sense if you're too young to, to, to go to, to the US, for example, super complicated market, doesn't, doesn't make sense. So, Kunal, from uh, the entrepreneur's perspective, we are speaking about the right moment to scale up internationally. So, you are now in your Series C, and you would like to actually grow outside of the Middle East. How did you, as an entrepreneur, uh, see that this is the moment? When was uh, your um, venture ready to go abroad, and when did you decide that actually the Middle East is uh, somehow Mm, smaller than your ambitions and the ambitions of your team. Okay, sure. So, I mean, just for us, like, Series C is a misnomer. Uh, just because uh, we're, like, a, still a very small company. We've raised uh, um, less than $20 million, and that is a Series A investment in Silicon Valley. Uh, so we're a Series A company. <laughs> uh, so uh, being a Series A company, um, uh, so, uh, but we've been in the market for a few years, so we've had the time advantage uh, to be able to figure some, uh, some, things, uh, some things out. Um, and uh, for us, I think we're still in, that, uh, in, our core, in our core model, core market. And then very recently, we started saying, hey, listen, um, should, we, should we deviate from the core model, core market? Um, and uh, we, we decided to deviate only to make tests. Uh, so we said, okay, we're going to, in terms of market, we're going to try to do the U.S. market, but uh, here's the amount of capital we put on it, no boots on the ground. Uh, you know, it has to be a growth hack. Uh, you know, it cannot be like a serious investment where you put five people trying to do this. Uh, it, has to be a, it, has to be a, it has to be a test. And in terms of, again, core model, we said, okay, here's, the, here's how we can, what we can build additionally. We don't have the capital to actually uh, take each of those experiments and scale them. But what we're going to do in the next year is uh, set those up as experiments. And what I'm saying is that, for example, our core model is um, pre-owned, eye selling pre-owned items. So we source these from closets, and then we resell them to other closets. Um, and then we say, hey, listen, you know, selling new items, or off, which is the off-price business, is very interesting. So maybe we should uh, try that out. And then, uh, however, again, we said uh, no, no no capex, no, you know, and uh, we'll, do a t we'll do a test. So we're st that's where we are. Okay, thank you very much. And Celine, from the investor's perspective, uh, do you, uh, you're a Paris-based uh, luxury tech fund. 
uh, do you invest in international ventures uh, or not? And actually, what is your added value in uh, helping the startups to actually uh, develop in the European or French market? Okay, um, so our goal is to invest internationally, even if uh, we, yeah, we will invest, I would say maybe 70% of uh, our portfolio in, in Europe, so not only in France, but the regulation of our fund allows us to, to invest in the US, uh, in Middle East, in China, or whatever. Um, if we decide to invest abroad, uh, I think one of the conditions will be to invest with a local fund, uh, because in our approach, we want to be hands on as much as possible. And when you invest abroad, it's difficult to organize a regular in person meeting. Uh, so we had this experience with a previous fund, so invest, we invested. Uh, um, we made an investment in the US, in New York, and another one in Denmark. And hopefully, uh, it's still working very well. So we, we had a very positive experience. But maybe also because we had a local partner. So we, are, we can rely on the, on the phone, on, on the team locally uh, to, to, to work with us more closely. Um, so in terms of value added, and I think uh, it makes sense for international companies to, yeah, to, to come and find some European fund or French fund, especially uh, for luxury. Uh, because again, uh, our goal is to, to be to a support, kind of support and to work on business dev. So it doesn't mean that uh, we will do it on day, on day to day basis. But uh, we worked on building a strong ecosystem uh, to be very neutral uh, regarding all uh, corporates, so we can uh, easily go to Chanel, LVMH, carrying Richemont uh, without problem because we are not, uh, um, let's say, belonging to any of them. So uh, it's really easy for, for us to open doors on that side. And when we invest in the US, for instance, and the, the target market is luxury or beauty uh, groups, yeah, it's definitely easier for us to open doors because of this network ecosystem we have been working on. Uh, let's say it has been a long-term process and it will, uh, will take also time because, you know, you have to spend a lot of time with uh, corporates to, to uh, in a way, be up to date on what are the uh, current issues, challenges, and also to discuss with them because even if sometimes as a fund uh, we may have a more prospective approach, uh, when you invest in a B2B startups, uh, you want to make sure at one moment of time there's a real market. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's speak now about success. So, uh, success in delivering. So, Peter, from your perspective, from the accelerator's perspective, what is your successful startup that is actually exiting your accelerator? For you, what is the kind of like a, a key success factor that shows that you have done the great job? And then I would like Celine to speak about as an investor. So what is your best exit? You know, when you have done everything uh, possible to make this investment uh, foster and that the result is uh, satisfying both for you and for the entrepreneur. And for Kunal, what is your, from the, uh, in terms of growth of your company, what is your target, not target, but what is your kind of like the objective and the ambition and uh, what would be for you the success uh, within, uh, I don't know, frame of five years? So let's uh, start with Peter. Okay. Um, the, the corporates are partnering with us to, to, uh, to be fueled by, by innovation, incremental innovation, not talking about uh, disruptive uh, innovations uh, here. So uh, that's why Richemont, uh, that's why Carrefour, that's why all these guys are, are, are working with us. So our only KPI at the end of a batch is basically the number of pilots and contracts that have been signed between the, the, the startups from our batch and our corporates. It means that we did a great selection 
okay, of startups that are answering exactly our corporate needs. And it means also that on the other side, we have really engaged corporations that are agile enough to move fast, to test fast. Thank you. Céline? So I could say um, the main KPI would be financial, uh, means that we will make a multiple. Uh, but I, I think it's not enough, uh, because uh, when you invest, it's a long-term process. Uh, it's a part of a life, it's a story, because sometimes you can uh, stay five years, 10 years, uh, and then uh, you, are, you get very close to the team. Uh, it's, it's very close, like a, a family uh, relationship, even if it's still a partner partnership. Um, so I think you, you, yeah, we look for more than just financial results and to make sure that uh, the company itself managed to, to, to reach uh, its ambitions, uh, that the team also uh, on the human side uh, managed to grow itself and, uh, and then uh, so far, uh, I w yeah, I would like to add maybe that uh, they managed to create an impact. Um, so it's, yeah, you, you can also look at more soft KPA, uh, even if, yeah, at the end of the story, when you are fun, <laughs> you have to make money. Fair enough. So Kunal, what is your success factor? So, um, well, I think just like two points. I think first, of course, scale is very important for it. So in the next like four years, we want to 10x from where we are, because we 10x in the similar amount of time. Um, so ideally, we'd like to do it faster, but I think given where we are, 10x is massive amount of amount of revenue um, from where we are. Uh, so I think that would be that would be one. But that's like a, you know it's like a it's like a pretty standard. It's just like you know finance a financial number is very standard uh, way. Um, so though that is, how should I say, I normally define it as size of ambition, you know, but the qualitative way to say ambition is, is there's, should be not, so there should be something else. And the way I kind of describe it to my team is, is magic, right? So, and I, I keep saying you have to make magic every single where, and then sometimes that confuses people. I actually wrote on the wall, make magic, and I keep telling everybody to do that. So, but what I mean by that is that, <laughs> Uh, that in the end, the customers have to really feel like, wow, you know, have you seen this? It's amazing, you know? And uh, they can then describe it to the friends, but that, you know, that first instant reaction has to be like that. And then that needs to, that is gonna only happen if every single team delivers it, right? So, like, I go to the marketing team and I say, listen, what's your vision? What is your vision? How are you gonna, what are you gonna do? So I say, you have to, like, do all of this stuff. And then normally they tell me, but that's never been done before, and you're asking us to do like, uh, you know, uh, influencer marketing, like the best company in the world, and you know, digital marketing, like in terms of performance, like the best company in the world, and then, you know, uh, all these engagement metrics, like the best company in the world is impossible. And I was like, yeah, but it's magic, you know, so you do some magic. <laughs> so uh, that's the quickest way to describe it. So I really think that, uh, you know, again, in the end, the reflection always needs to be the customers think that the company is magic, but the company needs to make magic like every single way. So, yeah. Well, fantastic. So you're like a magician. So thank you very much. I think that we have a few uh, minutes uh, remaining for the questions. So uh, please uh, have an opportunity to ask questions. Are there any questions on the floor? No questions? Okay, I think it's just the uh, aspect of the evening. Yeah. Yes, and the green action pain uh, <laughs> waiting for everyone. So please join me uh, thanking uh, our, our wonderful thank you, uh, protagonists of this panel discussion. So thank you very much. Um, you will get this wonderful gift so from <laughs> INSEAD. And actually, we have two INSEAD alumni uh, here. Um, from this, I declare the day closed. <laughs> and thank you very much for all your attention. And the cocktail is waiting for you. We will be having a lottery. So I hope that you gave to us the, uh, the cards. Yes, the business cards, because we have wonderful gifts from Swarovski, uh, from Christoffler, and from 
and from Ruinar. So if you would like to win something today, <laughs> please uh, give us uh, your business card and then uh, my uh, wonderful ladies, uh, the colleagues, will do uh, the lottery. So thank you. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah.